So when it comes to the selection of moths for coupling and decoupling, we are going to see that moths that are not healthy, that are injured with any kind of crumpled wings, and all uh, like you know, and if at all the body is exposed, such kind of uh, silk moths have to be taken away. Only the healthy moths are selected for mating, and the female moths, around three hundred to four hundred of them, are uh, collected into a fresh tray, and then uh, they are uh, like you know placed along with the desired male moths as well, and then they are broadcast over the females gently. Then pairing of the moths takes place for around five to ten minutes, and then the leftover moths that are unpaired are collected in another tray. You will get to see it's going to be like this. These are the moths. Then you have to do the synchronization for the moth emergence. And then, you know, you're coupling and decoupling. Female moths are spread in a tray. Male moths of desired hybrid are added evenly over the females. And 15 minutes, they pair. And whatever is not paired, they're removed later. And if the males are available in excess, they should be preserved at 5 degrees Celsius for later use. And each paired moths are kept in cellules arranged in a tray which is around 90 to 60 centimeters in size. All the trays are kept in a dark room for around 3 to 4 hours. Temperature is around 25 degrees Celsius. Around 75 to 80 percent humidity and semi-dark conditions are provided. Then, once this is done, after mating in around 3 to 4 hours, male moth ejaculates twice and first ejaculation occurs around half an hour and second after around 90 minutes. Therefore, pairing for around 4 to 6 hours of the moths is favorable so as to fertilize the maximum number of eggs. Further, uniform age of eggs is also uh, uh, like, you know, seen or is necessary so that, you know, uniform emergence of the, uh, like, you know, larvae comes out basically. It is also going to help to carry on with the acid treatment and the pairing process will be completed, should be completed before 8 a.m. And it cannot be carried for from 8 to 2, 12 p.m. In fact, so after around 4 to 6 hours of mating, the moths are separated and this is called as de-pairing. Males are separated uh, from the females by holding the female, twisting the male gently without injuring the external genitalia that are present of the female. Then, for second pairing again, you have Another, uh, like, you know, you have this male moths that are properly preserved. You can pair it for around eight times. Both the number of pairings decreases fertilization rates. Thus, only male moth can continuously or conveniently be used for around three times. Male moths are preserved at around five to seven and a half degrees Celsius for about four to five days. And then they are preserved in a single layer. And prior to this uh, second pairing, the male moths preserved are released at room temperature for 5 to seven, 10 minutes. And second pairing duration is also around 4 hours with a temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius and 80% humidity. Now once this is done, you have egg production. In this egg production, it is one of the most critical phases in the drainage. So you get to see that complete activity of the sericulture is based on the grainage activities that is there. So production of good and disease-free layings definitely improves the industry. Silkworm eggs are divided so that you know they are some of them are hibernating, some of them are not hibernating and in the hibernating eggs the embryo develops only halfway through. It undergoes a dormant state which is known as diaposing and hatches out in the next spring. When it is non-hibernating eggs, that is non-diapause eggs, embryo develops without undergoing diapause and hatches out in a normal way. So, univoltines are those uh, rays of uh, silk moths uh, which lay only hibernating eggs and multivoltines lay non-hibernating eggs while the bivoltines is intermediate in behavior. So, this is again dependent upon the environment. So silk, because of this, can be uh, like you know divided into or categorized into univoltine, bivoltine, and multivoltine. Now, when it comes to the oviposition, again it's the process of egg laying by the female moth. So after the decoupling is done, then eggs uh, uh, the females are placed on a paper. 
tapped so that you know urine passes out first then later moths are placed on egg carts which are covered individually with cellul or moth funnel you can see in the picture again so this gives a darkness and so that you know the moths are not disturbed so when you are producing loose eggs so that's what the major females are placed on the egg sheets and uh, then each moth is enclosed in a cellule which isolates the eggs laid by the moth and facilitates individual moth examination and elimination of the eggs laid by the deceased moth. In case of preparation of loose eggs, unit number of female moths are allowed to lay the eggs and uh, uh, on the starched paper or cloth with, uh, in a, inside a wooden or a plastic frame that is and it depends the number of moths that are present which for egg laying is from 30 to 200 according to the uh, like you know condition of the batch that is its health overall and the convenience of you know what how you want it and you need low humidity so you get around moths are allowed to lay eggs for around 24 hours in dark rooms you're maintaining the temperature at around 25 degrees celsius and around a relative humidity around 75 to 80 percent humidity which is maintained and then the mother moths are examined for any kind of pebrine disease and eggs are free from the pebrine disease are released for rearing. So again, two types of egg laying that is there. Basically, when it comes to that, you have the segregated egg laying, which is of two methods, pastures method, which is followed in China and Japan, and cellular bag method, which is followed in, you, you uh, like, you know, what do you call it, uh, the European countries, you can just like have a look at it. And then you have another method or another type, which is mixed egg laying, which is again of two methods. One is flat card method and one is loose card method. So in the flat card method, you get to see that it is uh, basically an industrial, it is used for industrial egg production. In a very large scale, eggs are pre presenting 20 to 24 squares. And they are arranged in a 16 to 90 centimeters tray. And each female moth is kept in one single square covered with a cellule on the top. And such trays are arranged in a tier in a wooden rack and put it in a OV position room. Uh, so egg sheets are present along the with the moths. They're taken to moth examination and uh, after around 24 hours of sampling. So once this is done, the moth samples are seen for if at all there is any kind of crushing or there is any kind of pepperine disease. If it is there, then the entire lot is discarded totally. So this is the advantage is that pepperine inspection is perfect in this. And if at all there are any eggs laid by the pepperine infected moths, they are totally eliminated or scraped. So productive seeds are prepared on the carts. When it comes to loose eggs preparation, again similar to the flat cut method, but the eggs are laid on a smooth side of a craft paper or on a starched paper. This method again has quite a number of advantages. So many moths are allowed to lay eggs and only the sample moths are drawn for examination. And this method is usually used in the commercial seed production. So around 200, 100 to 200 grams uh, brush is removed, uh, like, you know, of brushes. They are, they are used to remove the eggs from the cart, Aran root or um, arrow root. It's not, ar um, or maranta starch is added to around one liter of water boiled. So you get the starch paste that is prepared. And then once this is done, the paste is pulled, smeared uniformly on the craft sheet or the cloth in a thin layer. The sheets are spread in a wooden tray and then around female moths, around 30 to 200, after they uh, finish the urination, they are transferred into the oviposition room and the moths are allowed to lay eggs for around one to two days. Now, on the next day, the moths are removed for examination and after examination, the egg sheets or the cloth, they are soaked in water for around 15 minutes, gently brushed, then the eggs are removed from the cards. Then eggs are collected for around 5 to 10 minutes to remove the gum so as to avoid formation of clumps of eggs. Eggs are washed in water, transferred to salt solution, which has a specific gravity of around 1.06 to 1.09, which is at room temperature. And once this is done, 
fertilized eggs which have a higher specific gravity sink in the solution floating eggs having a low specific gravity are rejected good eggs are washed in the water again excuse me Right. So the eggs are washed again, and, and uh, this time along with a two percent formalin solution in uh, around for around twenty minutes. Then the boxes are uh, like you know they are uh, washed in water again, dried in shade, packed in box having around twenty thousand eggs. Then they are sealed and labeled. This gives the details of the race when the eggs were laid, the date of egg laying. The quantity of the eggs, name of the grainage from where it has come, and the technician who is involved in all of this process. That person's signature. Now, in multi voltage, one gram of eggs has about twenty-two thousand eggs, having a, whereas in uh, bi voltage it is eighteen hundred, and one kilo of bi voltage co uh, cocoons yield around fifty-five grams of eggs. And when it is a cross spread, one kilo of multi voltage and 0.7 kilograms of the bi voltage cocoon yield about 55 grams of hydrates. So this is because bi voltage females and multi voltage males are rejected. In a reciprocal cross, 20 grams of seed recovery is around expected. So you have the picture in your textbook. You just have a look at it. Smearing of the gum, then OV position. Then soaking of the sheets, you can just like I will see loose egg collection, degumming of the loose eggs, and then you have a loose egg egg box. This is the loose egg box that you can see. Now, so advantage of a loose egg, if you get to see, it's easy for mass mass uh, egg production, handling, transportation, and incubation. Helps in eliminating uh, the loop bad quality eggs and unfertilized eggs before they are supplied. And surface sterilization and hydrochloric acid treatment is more effective and uniform, more accurate than the sheet eggs for comparison of the scientific data, like in yields, race wise yields, region, and season wise yields. Now, it is different between the sheet egg and the loose egg production, and for the sheet egg production. And you can use ordinary craft sheets also, and without that, without any kind of starch. Uh, 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 coating on it and then you can use craft sheets for egg laying which is around 22.5 to 28 centimeters in size so again egg start uh, like you know you have the cellules that are placed over the moths to restrict the area of the egg laying and you have eggs stuck to the sheet they are supplied after the uh, supplied after the surface sterilization and acid treatment this is followed by p3 p2 uh, and p1 production and you have the loose egg production as well so, uh, cellules, if they are used, uh, like, you know, if they're not exactly used in the case of uh, ordinary craft sheets, but the moths are spread free on the sheet altogether. Then eggs are laid on the sheet, they are loosened, the surface is sterilized, uh, acid treated, measured, and then packed with loose egg boxes and supplied. Now, what is the effect of environment on egg laying? You should see that the OV position room should have around 24-25 degrees Celsius temperature uh, and it should have a relative humidity of around 80%. If the humidity is less, then the glue secretion released by the accessory glands in the female from the OV duct during the OV position, it gets dried up and the eggs cannot descend down. So what happens is OV position gets stopped. This causes very less number of eggs to come out. Thus, proper humidity is necessary for which electrical humidifiers, wet gunny cloth, soil beds, they are all best options for the same. When temperature rises, glue is released from the oviduct glands. It again gets dried up and causes a girdle in the egg laying. So, this hurdle, whatever is there, will not, uh, what do you call it, help for the egg laying. During low temperatures, glue will not get dried up soon. So, both Temperature and humidity have to be maintained at the proper conditions 
and this favors incrementing the egg number. So when it comes to the moth examination, you get to see that you have to have pebrine, uh, like you know, moth examination for the elimination of pebrine. So it's a trans ovarially transmitted disease, and infected moths transfer the disease from the mother to the eggs to next generation also. So elimination of the eggs by this disease moth is very much important. Again, two methods are there. One is the fresh moth or the green moth examination. In this, moths are examined soon after egg laying when the seeds are required for immediate use. And then you have the dry moth examination. Eggs are hibernated. Then the moths can be dried up, tested at leisure. Sample of around 30 moths is oven dried at around 70 to 75 degrees Celsius for around 6 hours. You have different kinds of examination as well. You have the individual moth examination, the mass moth examination. And uh, uh, like, you know, in this individual mo uh, moth examination, you get to see that it is uh, used for reproducing, uh, uh, like, you know, the reproducing, uh, re reproductive seeds. So all the moths are examined individually to see that they are completely free from pebrine. And after oil position, again, they're transferred to motor, crushed with pestle by adding around two to three drops of 2% uh, potassium hydroxide solution. Then a smear is taken to the slide, covered with gl cover glass, observed at around 600 magnification. And if at all, there are any kind of infected moths, they are uh, marked to scrap the eggs laid. So this is again laborious, but it is perfect when you get to see if at all there is any pebrine disease. When it comes to mass moth examination, it is seen in the industrial or the commercial uh, uh, production, wherein only samples of the moth are examined in groups around 10 to 30. Then so after Ravi position, moths are taken in groups for crushing by adding around 90 to 100 ml of the 0.5% potassium carbonate solution over here. Then they are crushed at around 10,000 rotations per minute to separate the pebrine spores from the tissue. Then the material is will filtered through the coarse filter paper. Filtrate is centrifuged at around 200 RPM for around 3 minutes. Then the precipitate, whatever is available, then is dissolved in 2 to 3 drops of potassium hydroxide. So the smears are taken for observing under the microscope there. Now, once this is done, you have to identify the pebrine spores. So they appear as shining oval bodies under microscope. Though the spores are colorless with a luster, decreased intensity of light gives a satisfactory contrast of the light and shade makes the observation clear. Now, when it comes to surface sterilization, you need to see that the eggs or the uh, loose sheets are present in the container. They are dipped in around 2% of uh, formalin for around 5 to 10 minutes. And then the eggs are washed in water, allowed to dry. And they have the, again, you know, they have the uh, um, name of the greenish, hybrid combination, date of egg laying, signature of moth examiner, number of good egg layings and all that. So this is ready to be sold. And loose eggs are sterilized with around 0.5% bleaching powder. Now you have to assess the layings also. So again, the deformed, poor, unsterilized, unfertilized diseased eggs are identified marked for moth examination. Removed or scraped from the egg card or the loose cards. Then this process uh, is uh, done by suitable adopted methods basically. You get to see that. Uh, so you have uh, treatment by hydrochlorination and you have a treatment by other methods basically. So when it comes to the different characters of egg, uh, different eggs, you see that total number of eggs laid by a single moth is called as a one laying and only good layings are supplied to the rarer. So in good layings, you have each egg, each laying having around 300 eggs minimum and less fertilized eggs layings are not considered and they should not have any kind of piled up eggs the eggs are laid in a single layer side by side and then good laying has a maximum number of eggs that are that come out and they are all disease free legs which is known as the dfls so that is why they are known as the good legs when it comes to multi voltine hybrid seed the, the eggs are non-pigmented or not hibernating and hatch after 10 days of laying and you 
She will not have an acid treatment before the eggs hatch. Sheet egg method is applied for the egg production and eggs cannot be stored for more than 20 days in around 5 degrees Celsius. Bivoltine male moths and multivoltine female moths are used for production of the hybrids. Sexes are separated at moth level for production of hybrids. And when it comes to the multivoltine hybrid seed, which is known as the CSR, you have the eggs which are pigmented and hibernating. They cannot hatch after 10 days of egg laying naturally. They need help. Acid treatment is required to make the eggs hatch and that is around after 10 to 11 days. And then eggs are produced by a loose egg production and they can be stored up to nearly six months under temperatures around two and a half to five degrees Celsius. And both the male and the female moths are bivoltine in nature and they are used for reciprocal crossing as well. And then the gender or the sexes are separated at the pupil level for production of hybrids. So in this lesson, if we have got to summarize this particular topic, you see that greenages have pure and hybrid seeds. They are the centers which are the most popular as commercial egg production centers because they have a direct link with the seed rarers. Aim of a seed production is to produce good quality seeds. Now, in the hybrid seeds, moths of different race, races are made to emerge or eclosion, and it is simultaneously on the same day, so that male and female moths are always readily available for hybridization. This is known as the moth synchronization or adjustment of emergence of moths. So, moths are, uh, emerge after 9 to 14 days of spinning. Pupal age varies according to races and seasons. And moths which are unhealthy, injured with crumpled wings and exposed body is rejected. Only healthy moths are selected for mating. So, you have a selective mating over here. And properly preserved uh, male moths pairs for around 8 types. And after decoupling, females are placed first on a paper tap to induce them to pass urine and then later moths are placed on egg carts covered individually with a saloon or a moth funnel. And since you all know that egg production is also one of the critical phases in drainage, this is very important decoupling and after this you have loose egg preparation for the industrial egg production on a very large scale. So around egg sheets containing 20 to 42 squares are Arranged in 60 to 90 centimeters tray, female moths is kept in a square covered with cellulose and lays are then uh, uh, laid on the smooth side of the craft paper or on the starched paper. And quite a number of large advantages or big advantages are seen in this method as a large number of moths are allowed to lay eggs and only sample moths are drawn for examination. So now we have already seen that and then next is the oviposition room. It should have around 24 plus or minus 1 degree Celsius in temperature and a relative humidity of around 80%. So pebrine is a disease which is trans ovarianly. So from the ovary to the uh, uh, moth, in, uh, like you know, uh, the next egg, it is transmitted. Infected moths transfer the disease through the eggs to the next generation. Elimination of this disease is very important. So again, disinfectant is used. Egg surface has to be washed. Surface is disinfected to remove the stains. Surface contamination also is removed then. So the total number of eggs laid by a single moth is called as one day. Please give me a moment. I will be back.
Yes. Now, when it comes to egg preservation and hibernation, you have a few methods for preservation of the eggs and then for the hibernation of the eggs. So, in this, we are going to see about what exactly is egg pre uh, preservation and the importance of it. And then storage for spring and autumn egg. And then what exactly are the hibernation schedules. So, in this, we are going to see that after the silkworms uh, eggs are laid, they are preserved with eggs that are of diaposing and non-diaposing type. Both of them need a lot of care while handling uh, the, them. And then you get to see that they are very well preserved, utilized for the particular season. Now, when it comes to the preservation of the eggs, you get to see that you need high quality of silkworm eggs. For that, you have to carefully protect, preserve them, ensure good and uniform hatching. So, univoltin eggs are left after oviposition. They do not have any kind of treatment. And they undergo diaposing without any kind of hatching in between. But bivoltin eggs, if at all they are incubated at higher temperatures, they become hibernating or black eggs and do not hatch for the second time during the year. Now, again, there are different types of eggs, like I already said. The eggs are of two types, that is diaposing and non-diaposing eggs. So, after oviposition, you have to have to, uh, uh, further processing of the eggs. And this depends upon whether they are diaposing or non diaposing nature. And generally, univoltine eggs are diaposing, multivoltine eggs are non diaposing type. And the industrial or the commercial eggs are usually hybrids of the both uni and bivoltine, and they are all non diaposing type. When it comes to the handling of the eggs, you get to see that in the diaposing eggs, there is a hormone which is responsible for inhibition of the embryo development. And this is neutralized if it is present in a cold temperature. So, this will activate the eggs. So, during the period of aestuation, that is, duration of higher temperatures at which the eggs are kept, and then the related duration of the cold temperature treatment required, required to break the following in, in the following spring. Now, this handling of the eggs refers to as the processing of the eggs under optimum conditions to obtain the hatching whenever desired. Again, this depends on the nature of the breeds involved in handling. So, important factors in egg handling is eggs are handled depending on the nature of the eggs. Hatching has to be obtained at the desired time and you need various conditions for different purposes, especially during incubation or handling and hibernation and preservation. So when it comes to methods of handling of eggs, you get to see that handling of multivoltine eggs, these breeds produce non-hibernating eggs. And then you get to have, uh, they hatch in around 10 to 11 days after, um, uh, what do you call it, um, after laying and then they, if the hatching is uh, delayed in these eggs, the eggs on the second day of laying should be placed for preservation at around 5 degrees Celsius with around 70 to 80 percent humidity for nearly 20 days. And during this period, eggs can be released for incubation on any day. So, when it comes to handling of bivoltine eggs, they, they lay the hibernating eggs that do not hatch in 10 to, 10, 10 to 11 days after laying because the eggs undergo diaposing. However, they can be made to hatch by following artificial treatments. So, depending on the requirement of their hatching, they can be processed by different methods. So, when it comes to preservation of eggs produced in the spring, you, you get to see that it is preserved in summer after the egg lay. So, in about a week, the embryo enters a state of diapause. Egg color is lightly yellow when it is first laid. And... Uh, after around 36 to 48 hours of laying, it gradually changes into a reddish brown and it becomes darker. On the fourth or the fifth day, the egg acquires its inherent color depending upon the variety. And during this period, respiration is very high because of all the embryonic development that is happening. So you should take care that you don't shock, crush or rub the egg during this period and should be kept in well ventilated, clean rooms at constant temperatures 
uh, at a relative humidity of around 67, uh, sorry, 75 percent. Then, <coughs> excuse me. Then, uh, high temperature is uh, necessary to stabilize the diapause of the hibernating eggs. Proper temperature for completion of the diapause is around uh, 25 degrees Celsius. Temperature of around 30, uh, uh, temperature of around 30 degrees Celsius is also harmful to the eggs. And higher than 30 degrees Celsius is harmful. Lower than 20 will not cause the diapause to be completed. So the hibernating eggs are unable to withstand this cold storage, disturbs the uniformity in the embryonic development. And because of it, you have to preserve the temperature of the eggs around 50 to 60 days at around 23 to 25 degrees Celsius in summer. Again, you need chilling days to obtain more than 80% hatchable eggs from the eggs that are preserved at around 25 degrees Celsius for around 10 to 210 days, in fact. Again, the optimum humidity for the preservation in summer is around 75 to 80 degrees, uh, 80 percent. And if it is too dry, the eggs will be lost. Uh, and if it is too much water or too wet, then you have mold growing on the eggs. So when it comes to the preservation of silkworm eggs, which are deposited in June, you get to see that the first is OB position. Second is around uh, in warm regions, you know, you have a decrease of temperature, which is necessary. So as to the temperature will come from between uh, 30, say to 23 to 25. And then you are, exp uh, then the temperature, it is gradually exposed to around low temperatures. And then it is present in around uh, that for, uh, the low temperatures for nearly 50 to 60 days. <coughs> and then it is placed in cold storage for nearly 40 to 15 days and then you have intermediate care and removal from the cold storage room for incubation. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, when you have to preserve during autumn or in winter, September through October, that is actually known as the autumn, eggs are still in the diapause phase. So you have a slight temperature variation, not much again. And you get to see that in November through early December, that's the early winter that is there, eggs enter the pre-termination of the diapause and high temperature should be avoided. So in order to secure simultaneous hatching, it is necessary to expose the eggs to a low temperature of around 75 to 7.5 to 5 degrees Celsius or lower than that for more than 50 to 60 days. And then you get to see as it is given in that particular table or figure. And ending of January, beginning of February, the diapause will be terminated at around 5 to 7, 4, 7 and a half degrees Celsius. And at this time, the embryos increase in length, head lobe is wide open. And if it is kept at 5 degrees Celsius for a long time at this stage, the embryos that have terminated diapause become unviable. Therefore, within around 60 days, they should be transferred to around 2.5 degrees Celsius. And then once this is done, the eggs can safely be stored for 50, 40 to 60 degrees Celsius, uh, 40 to 60 days at around 2.5 degrees Celsius. And then you have to do intermediate care also so that, you know, the eggs survive. And eggs are allowed to develop one step at a time by conditioning at around 15 degrees Celsius for a few days. Thus, the embryos that reach the stage of the longest embryo phase one day before the appearance of the neural furrow. Eggs are kept at around 2.5 degrees Celsius until the time of incubation. When it is uh, in tropical or subtropical areas, then the natural atmosphere is too high to break the diapause even in winter. So it is necessary where all the eggs are transferred into a cold storage chamber so that the eggs then go through artificial hibernation for the purpose of awakening the embryo from the diapositives.
when it comes to preserving the eggs which are produced in the autumn season or the rainy season that is when eggs are uh, like you know uh, they are known as the autumn eggs and they are hatched in the spring then the coming spring and duration of the egg preservation of the eggs is shorter nutrient in the eggs is also less consumed and it is easy to maintain the quality of the eggs so from time to time what happens is during egg production to incubation is around 6 months from october to april may next year and the time for low temperature preservation needed to terminate the diapause is around 2 to 3 months so again during this period the eggs get treated preserved at around 25 degrees celsius after egg laying and then you have lower the temperature step by step in the next 10 days and it is kept at around 20 degrees in the first for the first day 15 degrees in the next 5 days etc so a gradual decrease in the temperature and after being preserved in this way for a month the eggs are then kept in cold storage for hibernation so in hibernation also you have different kinds of schedules you have the physical and the chemical and then you have the uh sorry yeah in this physical and the chemical stimulants you get to see that they are very useful for artificial hatching so acid treated hibernating eggs can be utilized after around 10 days up to 1 year at any given time so you have a physical stimulants and a chemical stimulants a uh, physical stimulants include uh, uh, decreasing the temperature dipping in hot water high electric stimulation rubbing with brush or feather high atmospheric pressure ultra high frequency wave vibrations exposing to sunlight a uh, uv rays or uv short to uh, radio waves uh, short waves i mean exposing them uh, to oxygen chemical stimulants include hcl nitric acid sulfuric acid aqua regia which is a concentration of um, hydrochloric and nitric acid put together and you have uh, acetic acid sodium chloride hydrogen peroxide enzyme treatment and ozone treatment. so dilute hcl of specific gravity is prepared for treating the eggs strength of the hcl that is hydrochloric acid varies according to the temperature at which the eggs are treated then in the acid treatment strong inorganic acids give good results than the other organic acids so the nitric acid sulfuric acid the very strong acids you have to handle them very carefully so you use even hcl hcl is also dangerous but compared to the other two it's less, a little less dangerous then this is mixed with required quantity of water to get the required specific gravity which is necessary for acid treatment of eggs then specific gravity is uh, tested by a hydrometer and then it is again corrected accordingly so oh, in this you get to see that when this is done uh, uh, acid treatment is done and you need strong inorganic acids they give good results with the organic acids so nitric acid sulfuric acid uh, they are very strong acids you've got to handle them very carefully and then you can use hcl for that matter that is hydrochloric acid it which is required with specific quantity to get a required specific gravity for acid treatment of eggs so you have a specific gravity which is tested by a hydrometer and then you get corrected accordingly so details of preparation of 1 liter of acid is given over here with a specific gravity of which cl that is available if it is 1.150 then you have to add water and acid in the ratio 1 is to 1 so and that is uh, <coughs> again the uh, 1.0575 uh, uh like you know concentration of hcl that is and if you need 1.1 specific gravity and for uh, preparing uh, preparing around 1 liter acid you use 333 ml water and acid is 667 and again you can either prepare with a specific gravity of 1.150 hcl so to prepare 1.110 hcl you need around 600 and 267 ml of water and 
733 ml of acid so that's what they have given in this particular table 9.2 you can check it in your textbook you get to see that uh, it's uh, you know uh, a required concentration of hcl is equal to required specific gravity minus 1 into required hcl in ml by available specific gravity minus 1 Now we know that the specific gravity of water is 1. So value gives the amount of water to be added to get the required specific gravity of the acid. And once this is done, you need to perform the formula treatment. That is, before you treat with acid, you have to treat the eggs with the formaldehyde. So eggs are surface sterilized in around 2% formula for 15 minutes. <coughs> This helps to fix the eggs to the card. Otherwise, they release it to the acid during treatment. And after time lapse, eggs are washed. So again, required percentage is equal to commercial formula that's available minus the required strength by the required strength. These are the formulae that you'll have to remember all the time. And when it comes to the summarization of this lesson, you get to see that in silkworm rearing, it is important not only to produce silkworm eggs of high quality, but also to protect, preserve them for, so that, you know, you have good and uniform hatching. Univolting eggs are left after oviposition without any kind of treatment given to them so that they undergo diapause and they uh, like are produced without hatching. Eggs are of two types, again, diaposing, not diaposing. In diaposic uh, eggs, you have a hormone which is responsible for inhibition of embryo development and its effect is neutralized if at all cold water is added to the temperature. And in about one week of egg laying, the embryo enters a state of diapause. Eggs egg color is lightly yellow when first laid and, it, uh, and after 36 to 48 hours, it gradually changes into reddish brown and becomes darker. September to October, that is the autumn season, eggs are still in diapause, so slight variation in color and temperature does not make much harm. Early November and December, that is early winter, eggs enter into the pre-termination of diapause. High temperature should be avoided and eggs produced in the autumn for rearing in the next spring. They are known as autumn eggs. They are uh, uh, to be hatched in the following spring. And you need acid treatment for to treat the eggs for breaking the diaposis. And the dilute HCl of specific gravity one is uh, uh, of specific gravity is prepared by treating the eggs. So this is all about your hibernating and egg preservation and hibernation. When it comes to acid treatment of uh, HCl, you have around two to three types again. So you have artificial treatment in the acid treatment itself. Then you'll have acid treatment uh, and artificial treatment, understanding the role of formalin treatment before the acid treatment. And then the incubation time is very important. So, what exactly is acid treatment? What is artificial treatment? And understanding what is exactly formalin or formaldehyde treatment before the artificial treatment, we are going to see this. And what exactly is incubation? So, the diapause that is in some of the silkworm moths, and that is the hibernating eggs, it's a method of overcoming unfavorable period, which is caused either by physiological reaction conditions or non-availability of food. So for the silkworms of the temperate region, both these conditions will prevail during winter. Therefore, this has to be developed, the diaposing, that is the hibernating character to overcome this period. So what exactly is acid treatment now? So in the diapause, the eggs are uh, environmentally, physiologically, genetically controlled. 
So acid treatment will block this or change the physiology by blocking certain activities and they induce several new biochemical reactions for the continuous development of the eggs. So diverse eggs therefore are more preferred and they are referred to as the hibernating or the bivalent eggs while the non diverse eggs are ones those that are not hibernating or they are known as the maternal eggs. So when it comes to artificial hatching, what happens is multivoltines do not undergo diapers. It's only univoltines and bivoltines which undergo diapers of hibernation. So whether the diapers uh, is uh, 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 like you know whether it is a diapers egg, artificial hatching is done, and this is either by cold treatment or hot treatment or hydrochlorination. So hydrochlorination is uh, hydrochloric acid that is there. So to bring a shift from the diapause to non-diapause type also changes in the incubation schedule light around the shorter exposure to light and temperature during the incubation, changes in repairing conditions like continuous high temperatures, rearing low temperatures during the day, early stages and high temperatures during the late stages, cocoon preservation at high temperatures, copied with sections are, all of these are essential. So again, they have given selection and preparation of HCL, acid treatment, strong in organic acids, give better results than the organic acid. You have nitric and uh, sulfuric acid which are used and HCL is used for acid treatment. Again, the same formula, same thing has been repeated as it is uh, given in the last class. So specific gravity of water is one. Specific gravity of HCl should be tested and it can be done by hydrometer and it is corrected according to two minutes. So you have different kinds of problems also available. You can just like, you know, have a look at it in the textbook. They have given model for problems. So if you have to prepare 15 liters of around 1.075 specific gravity HCl and the available commercial HCl is around uh, 1.160 is the specific gravity. So accordingly you have the uh, solution that is 1.075 minus 1 is the specific gravity that of water into 15,000 into uh, sorry by 1.160 minus 1 1.00 so you get around 7000 ml of acid you get 15 liters acid now add 7969 ml of water to around 7031 ml of acid now this acid will contain around 1.075 specific gravity now when it comes to the treatment with formalin you get to see that you have to treat the mother moth during oviposition provides a thin gum like substance secreted from accessory glands on the surface of the eggs so this enables them to stick to the egg cart so egg carts are dipped into acid then it tends to dissolve this gluey substance or gum like substance then large quantities of eggs get they detach during the acid treatment and they are subsequently uh, found in the wash or in the washed water. So, this is a problem. What they do is the egg carts before the acid treatment is done, they are soaked in 2% formalin for around 15 minutes. So, formalin acts as a fixative agent, increases the egg to be stuck to the cart. And then it also helps in surface sterilization of the eggs against different diseases which cause pathogens and in removing the waste deposited on the cards. Egg cards thus dipped in formalin solution are either taken directly or subjected to washing in water. So washing in water helps in eliminating the irritating sound of formalin. In either case, the egg cards are dried in shape. It's also practical feasibility that the formalin solution is used for dilution instead of water at the time of the acid preparation. So what happens is egg case sheets are directly dipped in the acid, then it is treated. 
and it is a simple method which is already involved in other countries this method saves time saves space uh, saves uh, what do you call it uh, and it uh, is a separate soaking in the formalin solution and subsequent drying process all of it is curtailed again formalin is volatile in nature you have to be careful and uh, you need to have a certain amount of formalin so that you know after few treatments you can of the egg dropping you can actually see the condition of the eggs so when it comes to acid treatment you have two different types of methods one is hot acid treatment and the second one is the cold acid treatment so let me finish this lesson another 10 minutes and then we can just like you know log out when it comes to hot acid treatment you get to see that uh, it's at dipped in HCl having specific gravity of around 1.75 specific gravity for around 5 to 6 minutes at around 46.1 degrees Celsius. Then, uh, then the dipping is uh, time is different for different types of eggs. After treatment, eggs are washed in water and hot acid is treated eggs after 24 hours. And otherwise, eggs will not be able to withstand the temperature. When it comes to cold acid treatment, it's done in a room temperature acid treatment, no treating treatment of acid prior. So carry it around 23 to uh, 30 degrees Celsius to eggs after 24 hours after uh, OV position. Specific gravity is around 60 to 90 minutes at 24 degrees Celsius. So when it comes to acid treatment of loose eggs, Loose eggs are sterilized after being kept in a porous plastic container for acid treatment. Process of treatment is similar as explained and after washing in water, eggs are dried on a smooth cloth. How to stop the acid treatment now? It's not exactly advisable, but then if it is inevitable, then at 5 degrees Celsius for 5 days, up to 7 degrees Celsius at 2.5 degrees Celsius, this can be done. Later, this process is carried out as detailed earlier. Eggs are kept at around 15 to 25 degrees Celsius for around 2 hours and slowly brought back to 2.5 degrees Celsius. So what happens is boiling of eggs is stopped and egg preservation around 70 to 80 percent humidity is maintained. Hibernated eggs are then treated with acid to prevent the diapause to happen. These eggs are cold stored at 5 degrees Celsius but it is not beyond 3 days. When it comes to cold storage of eggs, again, you have two types of chilling that can be done or cold storage. One is short-term chilling and the second is long-term chilling. So, temperature is around 25 degrees Celsius, 70 to 80 percent humidity. This is maintained during the oviposition in the short-term chilling. Eggs are pressed left for around 30 to 35 hours at 25 degrees Celsius. They reach a spoon head stage, then preserved at 5 degrees Celsius for around uh, 40 to 55, 45 to 50 days at around 75 to 80 percent relative humidity. Chilling is prolonged beyond 60 days, then it is carried out at around 5 degrees Celsius for 40 days, and then at lower temperatures of 2 and a half degrees Celsius. So, eggs can be released after 35 days and up to 15 days. While releasing, eggs are kept at 15 degrees Celsius for 6, and a, 6 to 12 hours. Then at 25 to uh, 25 degrees Celsius for th 3 to 4 hours. Eggs are treated with HCl having a specific gravity of 1.1 at around 47.8 degrees Celsius for 5 to 6 minutes. Then washed in water to remove all the traces of acid. Thus, uh, eggs can be made to hatch in 45 to 60 days after the hatching. Now, when it comes to long term chilling, you get to see that you're keeping the eggs at 25 degrees Celsius for around 50 degrees, uh, 45 to 50 hours at 5 degrees Celsius with around 75 to 80 percent humidity for around 70 to 50 days. Eggs become brown and rich spoon head shape. Eggs can be released during uh, this period. While releasing, they are pre uh, preserved at around 15 degrees Celsius for 6 to 12, 12 hours and then at 25 degrees Celsius for three to four hours. Later, eggs are treated with HCl having a specific gravity of around uh, one at uh, 47.8 degrees Celsius for five minutes. Treatment eggs are washed in water to remove all the traces of the acid. So eggs that are treated can be made to hatch in around 60 to 80 days. 
after they are laid. Transportation of eggs and incubation is there. So in transportation, you from the silkworms or from the drainage to rearing centers, they have to be transported. And you have to maintain the temperature, friction air, light conditions, saltiness, and high temperatures. And this should be avoided at all costs. So you need ideal temperatures uh, to protect the embryo and to ensure the good hatching conditions are seen so that the yield and the crop of the silkworm is not affected. And so, therefore, they should be transported during the cooler hours, that is either in the early morning or in the evening. And eggs should not be transported during the hot summers or in a hot station or weather. The eggs are loosely placed in wood, wooden uh, carrier or performed uh, perforated paper cover. And also, you get to see that this method is simple, preferable to carry the ca uh, eggs in speciality made egg boxes. So this will uh, have perforations for aeration, provision for maintaining the humidity. When it comes to uh, incubation for healthy development and uniform hatching, bivoltine eggs are have to be incubated under optimum conditions of temperature, humidity, and light. So these are released for incubation through intermediate temperature at around 15 degrees Celsius. And after they re they're released, they're soaked in 2% formaldehyde for five minutes. Loose eggs, if at all they're there, they'll all be removed. Incubation and the equipment methods should be thoroughly cleaned, wa washed and disinfected before you start the incubation. So again, Incubation has a lot of influence on the voltinism, the larval health, the yield, and the quality of the cocoon crop. So you need maximum hatching. Optimum incubation temperature should be maintained, which is 25 degrees Celsius. And it has to be raised by 1 degree Celsius to 26 degrees Celsius on the day of hatching. So during incubation, humidity is at around 75 to 80%. Because excessive dryness, if it is there in the atmosphere, it results in dead eggs, poor latching, and weak larvae. Higher humidity also causes weak larvae, although it makes the hatching uniform. As the embryo grows very vigorously during the incubation, good ventilation should be provided. Care should be taken that you know the eggs are not overcrowded in a narrow incubation light. Light should be provided for around 18 hours a day till head incubation is. Uh, reached. Then you ha hatch the eggs in around 10 to 12 days and two days before the hatching, the color of the egg changes to a lighter shade and it has a distinct dark spot which is known as the head pigmentation stage. So one day before hatching, again eggs turn bluish in color and this is referred to as body pigmentation or the blue egg stage. So these two stages are very sensitive for to low humidity. So humidity should be maintained. For uniform hatching, eggs are kept in darkness and at head, head pigmentation stage. And darkness stops or arrests the hatching of the developed eggs, facilitates lagging embryos to reach the hatching stage. And after two days, when the few ha larvae hatch out, eggs are exposed to light. This sees that there is uniform latching around, or uh, sorry, uniform hatching around. Then you refrigerate the blue eggs in the newborn larvae as well. Hatching of the eggs under incubation can be delayed if it is required to refrigerate them in the blue egg stage. So you refrigerate them at around 5 degrees Celsius for 2 to 3 days and you provide 75 to 80 percent humidity during this cold storage and newborn eggs can be refrigerated at around 5, 5 degrees Celsius for 2 to 3 days but this is not exactly necessary or desirable. So to summarize this topic, Diapause in insects is the method of overcoming unfavorable periods caused either by physiologically unfavorable conditions or when food is not available. So phenomenon of diapause is environmentally, physically and genetically controlled. When the eggs are uh, left without any treatment, diaposing eggs don't hatch in incubation. So, from uh, to get a shift from the diapause to the non-diapause type, changes in the incubation schedule, like you have to expose to short amount of light and low temperatures during the incubation time. This changes in the rearing conditions, like the continuous high temperature, rearing low temperature during early stages, high temperature during the late stages, cocoon preservation at high temperatures, and this is coupled with selection 
So all this is essential. Acid treatment, you have strong inorganic acids that is HCl and uh, like, you know, the nitric acid being used. And mother moth, while oviposition, gives a small uh, thin film of gooey substance, which is secreted from accessory glands on the undersurface of the eggs. This enables them to stick to the egg card. So egg cards are dipped into acid, then they tend to dissolve the glue, uh, gluey substance or the glue basically. So prior to the fixation, you try to treat them or soak them in 2% formalin solution for 15 minutes. Then formalin acts as a fixative agent. This increases the adhering or the sticking capacity of the eggs to the egg cards. Two popular methods of treating the diaposing type of silkworm eggs. That is uh, to block the diapause eventually to see that they hatch like the non-diaposing counter counterparts. You have hot acid treatment and then you have the cold acid treatment. And then you have uh, like, you know, in this cold acid treatment or room temperature, no heating of acid. Treatment is at around 23 to uh, 30 degrees Celsius to eggs after 24 hours of oviposition. Chilling is also of two types, short term and long term. And then during the period of transportation, friction, air, light conditions, saltiness, high temperatures should be avoided. Healthy development and hatching uh, uniform eggs. Bivoltine eggs are to be incubated under optimum conditions of temperature, light and humidity. And then hibernated eggs are released for incubation through intermediate temperature, which is around 15 degrees Celsius. So this is all about your hatching and as a treatment of the silicone eggs. Next class, that is tomorrow, I will be uh, dealing with uh, the byproducts and the last topic in your textbook, which is uh, economics of the silkworm. So thank you so much. I'm stopping my screen share right now. All right. Thank you.